How do you store and organize all of your learning materials for your kids' activities, your sensory play? Or better yet, how do you do it, Christina? Hey, hey, you guys, it's Christina from The Purple Alphabet, and this has to be the number one question that I get asked. How do you store all of your learning materials? I will be the first to admit that I am not the most organized person. In fact, I've been really hesitant in making this video because I kinda am. So I'm gonna pull back the curtain. I'm gonna show you some things that I have set up that work in my house, some things that haven't, and I'm probably gonna organize a little bit with you. So in today's video, we're gonna be tackling organization for the kids stuff, and hopefully you'll get inspired and some ideas too. Organization is definitely gonna look different for everybody because you have different spaces, different closets, different things, different toys. I want you to keep a very open mind because it's gonna be different for everybody. Now in the past, I have made some organization videos and they are kind of like old vintage Purple Alphabet videos. I think I did one about busy bags. I also did one that was just our art related items. And so you can go back and watch those videos to get some more inspiration. I'll put them up here in the corner too. But back then I liked to limit the access for the actual activities. So that way, a lot of the activities had small parts and so it was a choking hazard. I didn't want them to have access to it. So I kept a lot of things put away into a closet. I'm really pulling back the curtain, <laughs> you guys. I'm not even organizing this or touching it up before I show it to you. I'm just gonna show it as it is because this is still a work in progress. A lot of times this is where I would keep a lot of the activities that I didn't want my kids to handle on their own, like the place value blocks because there's so many pieces. So I'd keep things here ready to go when I needed them. But I'm gonna have to clean this out because a lot of these things they are too old for now. I did the same thing for all of the art supplies too. These were put in a high up shelf so they couldn't get them out. I had to get the access to them so they could use them. So it was just a way to kind of guard them when they were younger to make sure that everything stayed together, was organized and kept together. Now that they're much older, they have far more access to all of these because they can handle them a little bit more responsibly. For example, all of their art supplies, I have a caddy on their desks where they can access everything that they could possibly need. A lot of their small parts and office supplies and markers and things like that are in these little storage boxes that they use to keep them. And so now they are in charge of their own supplies and keeping them organized although they're not very good at it. And the art supplies are now in a closet which they can access, so if they wanted to do some painting, if they wanted to do some clay, or they just need regular craft materials that aren't your everyday materials, I have now moved those to a lower cabinet so they can get to it. So as you can see, this is our closet that we have all of their craft supplies in, and I told you I wasn't gonna organize it before the video. So this is true in day in the life, how it's kept. It has seen better days, but for the most part, it is organized. You can see the containers that I've used previously are here, except we just have more of them. And we even have like a shelf paper organizer here, some different boxes, but it does tend to get stuffed in because that's them managing all of the organization. It is organized. There's even boxes in here full of supplies and all of these are labeled too. But since I still do things for the purple alphabet for you guys, we do lots of activity videos, we do busy boxes, tinker boxes, joke kits, preschool busy boxes, and lots of Dollar Tree things. I have to still keep the materials around nice and organized so I can pull them out for when I am doing videos. Here's what I'm working with now. I have these containers. They're great because they have this little handle on them. They have a tray inside and I've been able to fit a lot of stuff into these. I actually, actually, maybe not fit them in all the way. I actually have three of them here and then I also have this container that I've been putting things that wouldn't fit. So I kind of have outgrown these and I think it's time that I switch it up and get reorganized. But we're gonna fix that today. The first thing to consider is to develop a system that's going to work for you. What that system is, it could be different from what I use or what somebody else is using or even what another YouTuber might be using. Is your system gonna be by skill level? Is it gonna be by subject, all the math things? Maybe it's also gonna be by season, all the Easter things with all of the Christmas things and then there's also all of the summer play activities that are for outdoor play. Or maybe you wanna do it by type. These are all of the manipulatives and hands-on things. These are all the 
sensory things. I really have no rhyme or reason to why things are in here, but as you can see, just to give you an idea, I have all sorts of things in these. There's little bits and wooden pieces. There's the Dollar Tree um, animals for sensory play. I even have St. Patrick's Day rainbows in here. Lots of wood pieces. And in the bottom, I mean, there's everything. This one, same thing. Scrabble bits, gingerbread men, these little construction vehicles, which by the way, are really, really good. <laughs> I highly recommend those. And in this one, odds and ends. When my kids were younger and I was doing a lot of busy bags, I had one section of already made materials into individual busy bags. This worked really well because I can take and go and grab something when we were running out the door or if I needed something already done and it was all in one container put together. I had all of these all together in individual pencil pouches that had an open front so I could see exactly what was inside. Some other ways to do this would to be to clip them all together with a circular clip with the little grow mitts on each one of the bags. You could also hang these on a hanger in a closet. It was just really helpful because I had so many that I can put them inside the bin all together. Then I also had a section for activity trays. I love these trays. I use them from Lakeshore Learning. There's also some on Amazon. I'll have to put a link down below to some because I would just go ahead and preset activities on these trays, stack them all up, and then I'd also have a tray to go. This worked really well for materials that kind of had a lot to them or they were multiple materials or they had several things for a lesson. I would imagine if I homeschooled, this would be very helpful to do it this way. And then I had the trays ready to go as well. And sometimes the busy bags would go onto the trays and then I'd have a whole bunch of things that I knew I wanted to do with the kids that day. And then I'd have the next day ready to go too. So some tips that I kind of think about when I'm organizing is, is it portable? I like to be able to take something and move it around to different areas of the house, especially if I'm filming, so that's really helpful. Can you be able to move it really quickly if you need to? In the garage right now, because in the garage, I have a stash of containers. These are all empty storage containers. There's all kinds of different sizes, different shapes, small ones, shoebox ones. And the reason why I have them is because I like to have backups. <laughs> so what I found is, is that I will be storing something, some toys or something like that, and then that container no longer works. Maybe we get rid of some things, maybe we add things to it, so I have to switch sizes. So I keep a stash because I'm constantly changing them out. So some of these containers have been here for a while. These are constantly getting rotated. I want these right here. So I'm gonna pull those right now. A big tip for me is, is it clear? I love to have a clear container so I can see inside quickly without having to open the box and see everything that's in there. And that's also where labels come into play. Is it stackable? Because storing these things becomes really important. So I like personally to have things in boxes that I can stack to save space. So I have four of these. This should really help. I'm gonna take them inside so we can get organized. Now that I got my stash, four more of these containers, I think I might be good to go. So I'm gonna empty everything out, see what I have. So tell me, it gets better. It will get better. You have to have it messy or else you're just not doing it right, right? <laughs> what have I gotten myself into? Don't forget to purge while you're doing this process. Get rid of those things that you aren't using, have been worn out, or you just no longer are interested in anymore. When you organize, this is the perfect time to do that. And doing so will give you a little bit of breathing room. So I think it's at this point that I'm gonna do a little bit of purging, throwing away things that I don't think we'll ever use again, like these um, wooden dominoes. I think that these might be a giveaway because we have other dominoes and I haven't seen these in Dollar Tree in a long time, so I probably won't be using them for a video anytime soon. And so I wanna go through everything and then I'm also going to sort and put them in categories, I think. Play-Doh I've been using for a while and some of it is still good and some of it has dried out. So I got rid of all the ones that dried out and I'm going to keep the colors that I know are still good. We use these for the Tinker Dough Kits. So I have everything 
sorted, although it doesn't look like it, <laughs> but it is sorted. Here are all my wooden pieces, wooden scrapple tiles, wooden blocks. Over here we have alphabets, numbers, any kind of alphabet thing that I had. This is basically toys. So little um, fairies, the cars, ducks, things that can be played with for imaginative play. And then we have seasons. There is Valentine's Day, Halloween, St. Patrick's Day in there. There's even Easter. We have some Christmas, some fall. Then we go into all of this stuff. Things that can be used for manipulatives, um, pom-poms, beads. There's even some ladybugs. These little gems are really good. I have a little bit of tools. I actually have a whole other section for tools, but these two tools are here, little clothespins and tongs. These are containers, so things to put things inside of, things for dumping and pouring, um, little paper cups for STEM projects, shot glasses for sorting. And then I have some dough, kinetic sand, some sprinkles, which are great for sensory bins. And so this all needs to get bit put away and organized. So my next step is now that everything's categorized, I'm gonna go ahead and put it into containers. A personal favorite of mine is putting containers in containers. It's really helpful to divide things up, divided trays, divided sections, or containers from the dollar store to keep things separated. I also mentioned I'm a huge fan of labels. Labeling will help you see what's inside a container before you even open it. I use this label maker, but you can also use different ones. I'm gonna put a link down below for Amazon on some of my favorite ones. I ended up with two holiday boxes. This is the first one. This is my fall Christmas. And there's not a lot of Christmas because I actually store Christmas with my actual Christmas decorations. These can also be used for St. Patrick's Day. I kept everything in their bags just to keep it separate because I didn't have enough containers and I'm a firm believer to use what you have before you buy other containers. So that's what we did there. And the next seasonal box is this one. This one is Easter and Valentine's Day. I have far more Easter because a lot of it is also spring. And then the Valentine's Day is over here in the corner. This one has a lot more containers in it. And of course you have to stack them so that they fit better, which is kind of cool that you can put two layers in there. So Easter and Valentine's Day and one box of St. Patrick's Day. So this is more my sensory kind of box with sensory things in it. So my sand, my sprinkles, my dough, and then also things like pom-poms. Like I'll do a whole sensory bin of pom-poms in there. And I do have more pom-poms in another container, but the kids play with that. So that will just stay with the kids, but that's my extra. And then this one, it has room and it is for containers. Things to dump and pour and use in sensory bins and dough kits. Lots of room in that one. I did end up using these containers. So this one has things to manipulate, like beads, little pearls, and the tongs, so some tools, and then some of the toys. So I put all the toys in here to keep it all together. Then in this box is all of my wooden pieces, so my wooden scrabble tiles, and all of my wooden loose parts. Underneath there are my alphabets because I do have some wooden alphabets and then I have some of my plastic alphabet in there too. And then that container, this one's empty, so I'll probably save it in my garage for when I need to like redo everything. So I ended up with two of these boxes and then three of the larger scrapbooking boxes. No, four. Four of the larger scrapbooking boxes. Organizing your home and these materials can come at a little bit of a cost, which is why I'm considering doing another video on a Dollar Tree organizing for the kids stuff. So if that's something that you're interested in, let me know. I kind of have a list of ideas going for that already. Here's another video on the screen that I think you should watch next. I will see you over there. Make sure to click subscribe to see more videos like this and give me a thumbs up to show your love.